Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. Yesterday served as a good reminder related to FC25 Ultimate Team content as we navigate all these SBCs, objectives, and evolutions that we're constantly getting on this game. Sometimes it's worth it to wait, and yesterday's content really proved that. I want to talk about that in today's video because we had a massive SBC that's making me glad I didn't do some of the other SBCs that we have had recently. We also need to talk about the market because coins have been made after yesterday's market rise, but I think there's another opportunity today with squad battle rewards. It means there's easy coins to be made, and I want to show you guys how you can do that today. If you're excited for the video today, drop a thumbs up on it, and of course, subscribe if you are are new let's get into yesterday's saturday content really quick we had new squad foundations and objectives the milestones tab we have the women's super league some decent cards in here and uh also an spc player as well with ebony salmon salmon i'm not entirely sure how to say her name but i believe she had an evolution card or some sort of promo card last year that was pretty cracked and she looks actually for the meta of this game right now worth the 19,000 coins for sure 90 pace and quick step plus with the speed boost definitely worth a easy complete quick complete for a super sub card right there i mean there's not too much else to say about that card except for quick step plus and how meta that is at this very moment now let's talk about evolutions as well because we had another one seems like of course that the evolution bug has been fixed as ea mentioned i don't know if they've actually boosted the stats up i think people that are completing evolutions now which include power surge are getting all the correct boosts i don't know if ea has said anything or if you guys have seen any upgrades to your cards like joe gomez who were not boosted fully to begin with. I don't know if they've done kind of those looking backwards, those compensation, I guess, upgrades, whatever you want to call it, but we're still looking out for those. We did have the backline booster evolution, another defensive Evo yesterday, max overall 80 with 85 maximum pace, cannot be a center back, must be a left back. Now, when I look at my club, I don't have a lot in here that I could potentially evolve, and I think that's yet again a little bit of an issue with this Evo, but I like the whole premise of this Evo too because it gives a pretty solid pace upgrade. You get jockey playstyle, um, and it's not that many games. Actually, it is how many games? Play two and win two, so four matches to get a decent upgrade. I think for me right away, Jordi Alba looks really interesting if you want those links to Messi. That's a usable card at least. This Sessegnon, if you guys watched the streams and the videos last year, I had a Ryan Sessegnon Evo that was absolutely legendary for me, of course, and he was on Spurs, but this card looks pretty good too as a silver i'm sure he's a yeah he's basically 5,000 coins and i don't have one in the club but that even uses the power surge evo and it's a double booster into the back line boost there a double chain if you will so there might be a fun one in here this is the type of evo for sure that you're doing not necessarily for a super meta player you're building out a fun team of a past and present of a club that you're a fan of or uh, something like that that's what that evo is good for and i like it i mean i don't have anything against those types of easy free evos just a couple of games, solid upgrade, makes a fun card. There we go. Now, the real content is this right here, guys. We go to SBCs, and we had this leak yesterday before content, and I was literally on the golf course seeing this leak, and I got excited for it, not expecting the SBC to actually, actually drop, and it did. End of an era, Rafael Varane. Guys, this is a FIFA legend returning for the final time. In Ultimate Team, he has retired, of course. I th think the news came out just a couple of weeks ago. After not a very long stint with Como in the Serie A, he is retiring from football with injuries, I think, being the main cause of that. But... This is a legendary FIFA card, guys. He is always insane. And this card, EA boosted, really, really insane as well. He has stopper plus plus, defender plus, and ball playing. He's got a roll plus in all of the center back uh, roles, and especially stopper plus plus. That's going to be awesome. The big thing here is the play styles. He has pinged pass. Don't overlook that one. Block, anticipate, aerial, and intercept plus. What a card. Those are the three. Intercept, Anticipate and Aerial are like the three biggest ones for a defensive player, especially a center back, on this game and in previous games as well. Of course, with Varane, when you look at the in-game stats, you see the agility and the balance. It's always been an issue. But guys, I'm telling you, this guy's always good in game. Always, man. And I'm telling you, I used Varane last year after I got very lucky and packed him from a weekend league reward pack. I used his 88 for so many games. 
I used, uh, actually I didn't really use, I flipped this Varane for my biggest profit ever. You think I'm a United or a Madrid fan after hearing about how much I like Varane, but it's more from a FIFA love of Varane because he's always so good. And it stems back to FIFA 23 where I had this 94 Tots Varane. This card, who doesn't remember this card if you played FIFA 22? This was one of the most legendary SBCs. I think it was during Team of the Year that we have almost ever had. This card was in teams until, like, the summer. It was crazy. And then back to FIFA 21 and the TOTS cards. The 97 rated one in FIFA 20. And then this is probably one of the most iconic Varane cards of all time. Going down memory lane here and some nostalgia pieces since Varane is getting his last card here with his end of an era. This Team of the Year Varane card was unreal. Absolutely unreal card. People ended up playing him at right back. I think it was on 7 Chemistry. Um, yeah, so, man, that was a crazy Rafael Varane card. But these past couple years, he has been so meta. It's not a question of whether this card is good or not. It's a question of do you want to get the SBC done? Is it something that you're wanting to put that coin value of a player in? into your team and this is where i want to get to the point of today's video guys i'm so glad that i saved my fodder if i was impatient i even mentioned it in yesterday's video i started looking at nico williams and laminia mall and asm and i was like man i've got a little bit of fodder in my club i've got some cards in my duplicate storage i want to do a player spc right and i was even tempted to do asm maybe start nico williams or do laminia mall right away and I'm so glad that I waited, man. If I was impatient, my fodder would have been gone. And then doing Varan, yes, it's out for 30 days, which is very craftable. And I think it's a card that will be still very usable and very meta far beyond 30 days from now with the play styles that he has, the play style plus the stats that he has as well. Uh, I would not have that fodder if I would have just ended up and started doing one of those SBCs. It's a great reminder to just wait, guys. We talk about waiting a lot of times with evolutions. We'll say, yo, you know, maybe don't do an Evo right away because you never know what chain might come out. And that's so true. But I think it actually needs to extend the SBCs as well. When we look at some of these SBC players, especially nowadays, when we're getting multiple, multiple player SBCs per week, if there's not something that's truly a must-do SBC for you, like if it's a player from your favorite club, like if you're a Barca fan doing Laminia Mall or whatever it may be, if it's not like a, oh, this is a must do for me because I'm a fan of this club or I'm a fan of this player, then sometimes I think it's also just better to take a step back and say, you know what? We've got duplicate storage this year. We've got fodder packs and ways to get earn fodder through rewards in more ways than ever before. I'm going to take a, a step back here and just keep my fodder for a second. A lot of these SBCs are out for at least a week, multiple times, multiple times, two weeks, three weeks. Like we're seeing these cards out for a while. They're craftable and you can kind of do that. You can say, I'm going to wait a couple days if you're not sure on an SBC before deciding what to do. There might be something in the future. There will always be something in the future that you would like to do if there's nothing that's like speaking to you in that moment. So that's a good reminder from yesterday's content because I'm so glad I saved my fodder because Varane for me is a card that's probably going to stay in my team for a while. He links the French links, the Serie A links that I have in my squad right now. We have another Serie A center midfielder that is leaked to be coming out potentially today with Kefren Taram. A lot of people did Marcus Taram. And this is maybe just a personal thought here, but I would rather sink 300,000 coins of untradeable value of fodder into my team for a center back who's probably going to last longer in my team than doing a 500,000 coin SBC for a Nico Williams maybe would, you know? That's just the way that I think about it because a guy like this is going to be in my team for longer than that Nico Williams potentially would because attackers are getting changed out more and more often, in my opinion, than defenders and at least a lot of my team building experiences. I love this. I'm definitely doing this for Ron personally. I've got enough to do like two squads right now from the club. Um, it's not cheap though. 85, 86, 87, and an 88. It's the nostalgia piece. It's the end of an era card design, which was the first time we've seen this in this game. Earliest end of an era SBC, I think almost ever. So yeah, it's good. It is a little pricey. I get that, but you got a lot of time to craft it. We've got our FC24 rewards that are coming through this week um, that will give us a lot of fodder. We've got rewards coming today more rewards coming this weekend from foot champs if you haven't finished those yet so i don't think the price is really that overvalued i don't think it's that crazy when you look at other players like saliba and you're like oh nate saliba's 200k and he's 
on the market and he's just as good and maybe even better. They're actually very comparable in, in stats. They're actually eerily similar. They have the exact same face stats except for shooting and of course the play style plus. Varane does have the weak foot and skill move advantage but more the weak foot's important. But anyways, if I put this card on my team then I have to worry about his price dropping 30,000 coins the next day because of how EA runs this market all the time now and dropping store packs and you know well just like yesterday he went from 230k down to 200,000 coins because of Varane came out. If you do an SBC for this Varan, you're probably not spending 366,000 coins anyway, and then you're you're good. You're sticking with him for a while. You don't have to worry about it. There's none of that extra worry in there. But as you can see, if we look at center backs on the market, even like Rio, Rio was kind of like 1.2 to 1.3 mil. He dropped down to 1.1 million coins where he is right now. And a lot of center backs on the middle tier, especially, dropped down yesterday because of this Rafael Varane. Now, of course, with an SBC like this having an 88 rated squad inside of it too, what's the opposite effect? What's going up here, right? Well, fodder. People are selling those center backs to go and buy the high rated fodder that they need. 90, 89, sorry, are going up. 90 Harry Kane and De Bruyne are going up as well. But 89s went from about 22k to 26, 27,000 coins. They're on a nice rise. 88s are 18k a piece and 87s are up too. The rest of the fodder market is still in check it's that top tier that i find myself struggling to get for SBCs as well and that's the stuff that is going up if you want to buy fodder i would buy it today on squad that rewards on bid that's also a little bit of a hint for how you could make some coins today on this game there will be opportunity there now the other SBC i want to take a quick shout out to is the rttk challenge for yet again another easy tradable pack to complete that one's worth doing maybe after your squad that rewards today if you get some common golds or marigolds you get that one done and uh, get yourself a small prime, small prime Electrum players pack there. So that's my point with the Varane SBC. Wanted to make that clear because I think it brings up a pretty good t uh, talking point with the maybe it's best to wait sometimes on SBCs. Now let's talk market a bit because yesterday we did see at least how I thought the market was going to go in the early part of the daytime. I expected a market rise, guys, and that is exactly what we got. I bought two Garnachos at 430, sold them at 497, timed that perfect. I bought one Harry Kane at 710, timed the buy perfect. Could have got about 30,000 coins more for the sell, but I'm very happy with these flips right here. And then I picked up some gold cards as well, right? I mentioned the Rolfo. I bought her for about 13,000 coins, and then she went all the way up to about 17, sold that in pretty good timing as well and did that with some other golds that's kind of how the market went it was low really early yesterday saturday morning it rose up in the midday as everybody was playing champs and then you had of course a little bit of a drop off heading now into squad battle rewards and some more supply for the market and if you made profit here, GG's, because there's a lot of stuff that went up. Low tier, mid tier, high tier. Some nice rises on cards this morning for sure. But as we look into today with rewards, what do we need to remember? We need to respect squad battle rewards, guys, because every single week for the past two weeks that we've had these, is this our third set of squad battle rewards now? I think it is. Time flies. These always make the market dip because the packs from here, especially in the elite tier of those rewards and even though the gold rewards of those squad battles it's pretty good it's going to bring supply to the market today and i think that's going to impact most impacts cards from this road to the knockouts team too and probably the team of the week i think a lot of people are going to be looking to invest in team of the week cards today with the supply from squad battles watch out for that and watch out for these cards specifically these to dip i think these cards need to drop they're still a bit overpriced some of them even though of course they're um, very popular got some big upgrades like the garnacho and malogusto i think is very overpriced still how is garnacho cheaper than malogusto i mean i know the links for malo are insane especially with the uh, new varan that came out that card to me is still very expensive but we'll see he's also pretty rare as well loftus cheek i think is too expensive we'll see how these cards react today to the supply but i think that most of them will drop but that means a really good opportunity to get on bids. Let's actually use Rolfo's card for an example here. Last Sunday, with the rewards for squad battles, she went from 17,000 coins down to 14, 15K at her lowest. Yeah, 14K. And then after content, it was a slow content day. All we had was ASM last week. She started to rise back up into content and then went even higher into the Monday, 16, 17,000 coins. What I think today offers on this game is an opportunity to get on cards that you maybe want for your team 
Yes, this, according to the last couple of years in this game, has been one of the best days. Sundays and Mondays have been kind of the days where the market starts to rise up from the weekend as we have weekendly rewards that are paid out. People get those coins, and the supply seems to, to shore up a little bit, and the demand keeps running strong, especially in the early game like right now. And you should hopefully see a few players who start to go up and have a rise into the week. Now, of course, we've seen some pretty hefty price drops this weekend, right? Salah was 280 on Friday morning, and now he's 230,000 coins. Does he go all the way back up to 280? I doubt it. Could Salah go to like 250, 260? I think that's possible. So I think if you want to get this for your team, you're looking at these types of middle to high tier gold cards. We're talking these guys that have been in demand, Antoine Griezmann, um, Jules Koundé, right? Some of the Barca links. People are still really interested in those. The Barca links, La Liga links. He was down at 108 on Wednesday, went back to 120. This is a card that people still want with the French links as well. He can play right back, link to Varane all that sort of stuff. I think those are the types of players that you want to watch for today. And if you're like, Nate, I'm not sure who to buy. Literally just go to Footbin like this, search players, version gold, and then look through a lot of these players that you know are hype. Even the players that have you've seen, if you look at graphs, like Patrick Guijaro has so much hype. She was 68K on Friday, 68,000 coins. Last night she was 55, went up to 59, and is now 49K. Is she going to go up today? I think there's a decent chance of that. The long ball pass plus. She's very hyped. People are going to get these squad battle rewards, have some more coins to go out, but there's going to be supply with them as well. So I think getting on bids and snipes in the couple hours after rewards today is going to be the move. And always focus on out of packs cards because um, last week the market actually didn't move that crazy right after squad battle rewards. As we looked at that graph of roll fold, the cards moved up more once we got two content. So content does play a factor in how the market rises today for sure. I just did a little bit of safe bidding here, I think. I picked up a couple of Taros and a couple of Vandevin Golds. Vandevin Gold's still overpriced to me, but he's out of packs. And I got this one for a really low bid of 53k. And so I think hopefully he goes back up to 70,000 coins today and I make a little bit on this Vandevin card. Maybe Martinez goes to like 53 or 54. And then I also picked up two Martinelli's at 38K. So I was like, you know what? That's just something I'm willing to put on my transfer list as a team of the week investment. And I'll, I'm fine to let that sit for a week or two. And hopefully he goes to like 60,000 coins or something like that, because that just seems really, really cheap for a team of the week. But I understand that this team of the week has more supply than team of the week's probably like one and two combined because of the weekly rewards, the four you packs are in the store this weekend and stuff like that. So I don't think this is going to just fly today, but I do think today is going to be a really decent opportunity to invest in some of these team of the week cards as well. So again, guys, I just want to reiterate that if you're looking to buy a player for a team, I think today's a decent opportunity to go ahead and do so. And I would watch the out of packs market as well. Team of the weeks one and two, that Florian Verts at 183,000 coins is a price that I like. So I'm going to go take a look at this. And this is what you can start to do now with the out-of-pack specials too. If you're like, Nate, I don't want to trade with golds. They're too risky. We've got a rising number of out-of-pack special cards like Informs, Road to the Knockouts Team number one that you can uh, go and potentially put some coins into and have a little bit of a safer investment because people will be upgrading to these cards too. They will want to use these, want to play with these cards with dynamic images and stuff like that. As we get more coins on the market, those cards will start to go up too. So that's kind of the market situation that I think is going to happen today. And speaking of the market, we mentioned it just briefly, but store packs, right? Yesterday, we had a store pack. I need to cover this really quickly. It's our biggest pack yet. 250,000 coins for the heroic season opener pack contains 35 rare golds with three of them 84 plus. And it also gives a base hero rated up to 87 overall. All items are untradeable, which to be completely honest, why would you spend the coins or the money on this pack just to get a hero card that's max 87 rated. I do not think that it's worth it in my opinion at all, especially with coins. No shot, it's worth it with coins. Um, but we've now had a max 87 base hero that is dropped in the store. So does that mean we're going to get a base hero max 87 SBC sometime soon? Probably a week away, maybe two weeks away from that sort of thing. We're not far off from our first Icon and Hero upgrade packs of the year, guys, just being honest. But I wanted to point that out because that was a store pack that was dropped yesterday. And again, we're still waiting for one of those 4U packs to drop again, that Walk the Walk pack. I'll be ready for that one when that drops because that looks like it could do some damage to the market. We will be watching, of course, 
today. If one of those drops, I'll be quick to tweet it out because that's huge for the market. Now let's talk about Sunday today. Regardless of the market moves, what sort of content could we see to shake up the landscape of this game today? This SBC, I would have to guess, could be today, right? Remember, we had ASM last week. He is expiring today. Last call to do him. And Kefrem Taram may be the one to replace him. Of course, a lot of us have done Marcus Taram, a lot of the Syria French links. EA like to do this, if you haven't noticed over previous years. They like to put out multiple cards from the same league, same nation, kind of make a theme get you to build a squad and then they'll just go a different way drop an, another insane player from a different league different nation link so you have to maybe start to build a team and they'll drop a couple more from that same one they changed to kind of helping us guide our squads along the way it's again all a part of this game and content and where you have to be careful spending your coins in different areas but i digress from my ted talk this taram should be a banger now these predicted stats here look really really good and like we know, with these Road to Knockout SBCs, they have not been that juiced. ASM, very small upgrade. We are disappointed. Nico Williams, pretty small update. Our upgrade, we were disappointed. Sure, there's been some nice cheap ones like Ben Godfrey, Lo Celso, um, and then we had Diogo Jota as well. Small upgrade, very disappointed on that one. So I'm not getting my hopes up too high for this Tehran, but if he is Hullet Gang... This card's very good in game. I used the gold card for the first like week and I just took him out of my team, honestly, a couple of days ago. This card is very good. Very good. I know some of you guys have maybe evolved him as well. He fits a triple Evo here intro, power surge, box to box. I think there's a better one here that puts him into the octopus Evo. Yeah, that's like, look at that card right there. He's very good in game. If his SBC is around these stats, like from a 78 to an 84, 85, which I would imagine he would be, that gives me hope today for this card actually looking pretty nice because his overall is low to begin with. I think this SBC is coming today, though, just based off of the ASM SBC, and I hope it is a banger. So that's really the only thing that I'm kind of like looking forward to today as a big piece of content. We still have the Player of the Month, Liga F, that has not been dropped yet. I was kind of thinking that would be yesterday, but it actually was not. And the last thing I want to talk about is, well, of course, Evolutions. We got the Evo train rolling again, so... Hopefully, they're going to drop us um, an Evo like today, too, since they usually do the Friday, Saturday, Sunday evolutions. Hopefully, today, though, even if it's a paid one, I, I think we're ready for another paid evolution that's not a cosmetic one, but something that allows us to upgrade maybe some 82s, maybe an 83 rated card. Maybe it's 75,000 coins with a nice upgrade and gives a roll plus plus like that octopus evolution did. I think we're ready for like somebody from our team to go into an evo type situation so watch out for that because i would expect an evo today too the last thing i want to mention is when are we getting new rush objectives the timer and like the events inside of the rush game mode are really starting to confuse me and it's kind of detracting from the hype of this mode i haven't played rush in a few days because there's been no incentive for me to play rush and right away at early doors of this game this mode was hot and it was popping because there was stuff to do. Now, maybe they're waiting for Foot Champs to finish. I get that. Right now, for a lot of us, Foot Champs is the mode. I've gotten my rush points done. I've had this done now, I think, for like five days. I did it last week at some point. The packs were just mid. I wish there was something in rush where we had like, you know, 750,000 or maybe even a million rush points. Like, it's just a crazy high number that we could continually chip away at and grind to that if we didn't want to play champs, didn't want to play rivals, we could at least go play a little bit of rush, get an evolution progress uh, sorted, and then also work towards, like, a milestone in terms of a, a rush objective. I'm just waiting for a new mode in rush, too, because it seems like the season ends here, it says, in four days. I feel like this timer keeps changing. I, I'm really confused with the rush events and the rush objectives right now because in the beginning, they made sense, and right now, they don't. So I just wanted to mention that in today's video as well. And that could honestly be its own video itself. But we'll see if EA... Oh, I won this bid? Oh, I won the bid for Verts at 177. Sick, bro. All right, well, hopefully this card is back to like 200,000 coins. Again, the reason why I like this Verts is because if I go look his card up once more and show you guys... This is how I'm trading right now with out-of-packs in forums and how you're going to be able to do this. I got him for 177. Yesterday, it was a low at 184 and went up to 202. I'm hoping he goes back to 200K today, and I will take my... That's almost... That's almost 20k of profit. That's not too shabby. So that's the exact type of trade that you can start to make. Here's another one. I'll try to win that one on bid for like 170 as well. See if we can get some profit through that. And those informs and out of packs RTTKs. I want to say this too. I don't think we want to invest in these today fully, but I do believe there could be an opportunity to buy some of these today to flip them in the next couple of days. 
if they drop a lot. Got to see some pretty substantial price drops on RTTK Team 2. Obviously, RTTK Team 1 has flown, and a lot of people are going to want to start buying Team 2 after they see some supply because of how good Team 1 rose. It happens all the time, right? All these investments, like we were kind of thinking, yesterday early in the morning, they were good, and then really on Friday, these were the best on Friday, and even on Thursday, they were pretty good too, as some of them were their absolute cheapest during Rivals Rewards. But I think that's what we're watching for with these Team 2 cards today is we need some supply, get their prices down a little bit, and we'll see if there's an investment opportunity for a couple day hold. But I do feel pretty strongly about the market unless EA drops something outrageous today. But with the Varan dropping yesterday, I think today's going to be kind of a mid slash quiet day of content besides the chase with rewards. But this SBC, man, this is a big one. I tweeted yesterday that I think that this card is good enough to be in teams until team of the year or at least around there. I'm going to I'll move that back maybe to December. I think two months from now, this card will probably still be in my team and a lot of people's teams. I honestly think this SBC has the potential to be a Laurent Blanc from last year in FC24, where we were using that card up until team of the year, just because he was so good. It was an early SBC that was a great value. I really feel like this one right here as well, checks a lot of the boxes. It's a big name player. The links are good, the play style plus is necessary for the longevity. Sure, the stats maybe get a little bit low, but he always plays good in game. So I'm excited to get crafting on this Varane SBC here in the next couple of days. And also I haven't played a lick of foot champs. It's going to be a struggle. We got to play 13 games today because of course this uh, foot champs ends tomorrow. So we got 13 games to get done and I have no wins yet. Off to a bad start. Need new tactics, but we'll get that sorted today. I will be streaming live today. Link is down below in the description. If you want to check us out there, we should be live around content to see what we get, make some moves on the market and play some of those foot champs games. But if you enjoyed the video today, drop thumbs up on it. Comment below if you have any questions and subscribe if you're new. It's been Nate the Buddha Cannon. Have a great Sunday. I will see you in the stream today. Peace out.